Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about the derivatives of our trigonometric functions. Um, by the end of this video, we should uh, maybe not find the derivatives of all six of our basic trigonometric functions, but we'll at least have the tools to find them if we need them. To get started, I wanna look at this example. We're given the graph of our sine function up here, and we just wanna sketch the graph of the derivative of our sine function. So let's see, if we look uh, across the graph of our sine function, where is it gonna have a horizontal tangent line? It looks like we have one here, as well as one down here, up here, and another one right there. Turns out uh, all of our kind of uh, horizontal tangent lines are corresponding to these maximum and minimum values of our sine function. Right, all these little pink lines are tangent lines, and they all have a slope of zero. So when we plot those points on our derivative, remember the derivative is the numerical value of that slope. So these are gonna be the zeros of our derivative or the x-intercepts. Well, if we look at the small interval between negative pi over two and positive pi over two, we can see all of our tangent lines are sloping upwards. So they have a, a, a positive slope, right? Our function is increasing, so it should have a positive slope. Looks like at x equals zero, we have our steepest tangent line, so that'll be the point with the highest numerical value on the derivative for that y-coordinate. The highest value of our derivative, whatever it is, is gonna be at zero for this interval. We have to approach that maximum value from that zero that was at negative pi over two on our derivative. And then after we've hit that kind of maximum value on our derivative, we have to start going back down. So on our little interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, our derivative is going to look something like this. Our tangent lines and their slopes are now starting to point downwards, so our derivative has to reflect that. It has to be negative. And kind of similar to what happened at zero, at pi we have our steepest derivative on this interval, but now our derivative, which remember is just the slope of our tangent line, is going to be negative. And kind of based off symmetry here, however kind of positive this slope is, this slope looks like it should be the same, just in the opposite direction or negative. On the interval from pi over two to pi, our tangent line was going down. So we have to decrease to that point, actually hit that zero. Then what happens as we go from pi to our next zero at three pi over two? Well, our tangent line is still negative, right? But it's becoming less and less negative, right? It's got to go back up to that zero at three pi over two. So our tangent line slope has to increase, which means our derivative has to start increasing there as well. Right? We can perform that same analysis on the uh, other intervals over here, but it's all really symmetric, right? So we're going to get the exact kind of thing happening, exact same thing happening. A very rough sketch of the first derivative of our sine function. If we look at this graph, it should seem pretty familiar. What kind of graph does it look like? Well, it looks like one of our other trig functions in particular, it looks like our cosine function. And it turns out the first derivative of our sine function is exactly our cosine function. And uh, in this video, we're not gonna go through like the uh, algebraic proof like we did for some of our other derivatives, but you can find that uh, in the textbook if you wanna see that. So now we know the derivative of our sine function is exactly our cosine function. And so we could repeat this process if we wanted to, to also find the derivative of our cosine function. In fact, we have it right here. If we were to try to sketch the graph of the derivative of the cosine function in the same way we did for the sine function, uh, what would we get? Well, we'd see that we'd have a zero for the derivative at zero, then we would start going down, and then we would start going up and give us another one of these trig functions. And if we took the time to do all that analysis, what we'd find is that the derivative of our cosine function, it's not actually our sine function, it's a vertical reflection of our sine function or a horizontal reflection of the same thing in this case, uh, but it's actually our negative sine function. So the derivative of our sine function is our cosine function, and the derivative of our cosine function is not our sine function, but negative one times our sine function. And what's really, really nice about uh, knowing the derivatives of these two most basic trig functions is 
because we have all those relationships between our trig functions, and the, uh, what I mean by that is we can uh, always write them in terms of sines and cosines, we can now find the derivatives of all the other trig functions using the derivatives of sine, cosine, as well as some of our uh, derivative techniques like the product rule and quotient rule. And that's what we're going to look at for the rest of this video. Hey everyone, in this video we're going to do an example where we uh, differentiate our tangent function. So we're going to try to find the derivative of our tangent function. And so in order to help us do this, we're going to have to uh, first rewrite our tangent function in terms of our sine and cosine function. Remember we have that quotient identity that says tangent of x is the same as sine of x divided by cosine of x. And the reason we're expressing tangent in terms of sine and cosine is because we, we learned how to take the derivatives of these functions in our previous video. And so that's going to be helpful in this video. We have the uh, sine divided by cosine. So if we want to find the derivative of one function divided by another or the derivative of a quotient, we're going to have to use our quotient rule. Remember, our quotient rule formula says if you take the derivative of one function u divided by another function v, we can express the derivative in terms of the two functions and their derivatives. It's the uh, derivative of our first function u times our second function v minus our first function u times the derivative of our second function v, all divided by our second function v squared. And well, to use our formula, we need to know u prime and v prime. Oh, we found those earlier. u prime is the derivative of sine, which is cosine, and v prime is the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. So just putting our pieces together, it looks like the derivative of tangent is going to look like, well, u prime times v u prime times v is cosine times cosine. We can combine those together and express it as cosine squared of x. Now we have to subtract away from that first term in our numerator, the product of u and v prime. Our first function u is sine, and our second function v prime is negative sine. If we multiply those together, we get negative sine squared of x. And we can't forget the last part of the quotient rule says we have to divide this whole derivative by the square of our denominator. Our denominator was cosine, v was cosine. So v squared is going to look like cosine squared. So we have the derivative of our tangent function written here, but we can actually simplify this formula. So let's go ahead and take a few minutes to do that. So in the numerator, we have this double negative going on whenever you subtract a negative. That's the same as adding a positive and squared of x plus sine squared of x. And that is still all over cosine squared of x. And we can simplify this further. If you remember some of your trigonometric identities, cosine squared plus sine squared should look uh, very familiar. Right? That's probably our most popular trig identity, that Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared of the same input is always equal to 1. So we can rewrite our numerator as 1, and our denominator is still cosine squared of x. So the derivative of tangent is 1 over cosine squared of x, but we can write this in another way, because if we remember some of our other trig functions and the uh, reciprocal identities, 1 over cosine, that's the same as our secant function. So 1 over cosine squared is the same as our secant function squared. So now we've proven using the quotient rule and the derivatives of sine and cosine that the derivative of our tangent function is secant squared of x. So now we know the derivative of our tangent function is our secant squared function. We'll be able to use that as a shortcut, just like we have our shortcuts for our sine and cosine derivatives. And pretty much all the other basic trig functions, our cotangent, secant, and cosecant function, we can find their derivatives in basically the same way or using the same approach, express the other trig functions in terms of sines and cosines, and then use the, uh, the quotient rule or whatever derivative rule is necessary.